Hey there, this is Miss Nelson here, and today we are doing Lesson 5.5 in our 4th grade Florida Go Math books. Lesson 5.5 is about finding out whether a number is prime or composite. So what prime means is, is that number can only be, you can only have one and that number multiplied together to get that number. So for, for example, the number 13, if I were to list out, oops, messing this up, if I were to list out all of the factors for 13, the only ones that I could come out with are 1 and 13. I can't do 2 times anything, I can't do 3 times anything, I can't do 4 times anything, I can't do 5 times anything, and so on and so on. The only two factors that give me the product of 13 are 1 and itself. That means that 13 is a prime number. So any number that only has the factor of 1 in itself, those are called prime. Composite numbers mean they have more factors than just one in themselves. So for example, 12 is a composite because it can have 1 in 12, 2 in 6, 3 in 4. So it has many more factors than just the 1 in itself. So this is a composite number. So today's lesson is how to identify composites and, and prime. So they give us a word problem here. It says students are arranging square tables to make one larger rectangular table. If the students want to choose from the greatest number of ways to arrange the tables, should they choose 12 or 13 square tables? So what you would be doing is seeing which one has the most factors. Now we've already listed out the factors for 12 and 13, so we can obviously see that 12 has many more factors. The factors are, of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And the factors, so let me write that down here again. It has us write it multiple times just so we can kind of get it stuck in our head of how to do this. And then the factors of 13 were just 1 and 13. So 12 is a composite number, 13 is a prime number. So we can easily see once we list out the factors of these two numbers that the students should choose the 12 because there's many more factors in 12. There are more ways to arrange those 12 tables. You could do it like this, one row of 12. You could also do two rows of six. You could do three rows of four. And then you could go the opposite way as well. You could do six rows of two. like that, or you can do four rows of three. So those are all the different arrangements. There's one, two, three, four, five different arrangements. Oh no, we forgot 12 rows of one. So we could go down 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 rows of 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways of arranging those 12 tables. But with a 13, you can just do the 1 row of 13 or the 13 rows of 1. So you can't do as many different ways of arranging. So the basic lesson today is, is it a prime? Is it a composite? So what you have to do to figure that out is write out your factors. If it only has the factor of 1 in itself, it's a prime. 
if it has lots more factors, then it's composite. Now, one trick is we learned earlier in this chapter our divisibility rules. You can use those divisibility rules to help you tell whether a number is prime or composite. If a number is divisible by any of those numbers on the chart of the divisibility rule, then the number is composite. But if it's only divisible by one, then it's a prime. Okay, so this is lesson 5.5. If you're in my classroom, I want you to write down the password table in your planner so I know that you've watched the video. And if you have any questions, just feel free to leave me a message. Thanks.